Hello and welcome back. So today we are discussing because I could not stop for death by Emily Dickinson. So without wasting any time, let us get started with the poem itself. So in the first stanza, we have lines uh, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. So we see a poet or a speaker who is very busy with her or his life and he doesn't even have time to stop for the death. But we know that death is inevitable and no matter who you are and what you do, death will eventually find you. So even though this person, this speaker doesn't have any time for death, so the death itself has managed some time and the death has stopped for this speaker. And after that we have a description of the carriage and uh, when the death comes and it stops for the speaker, we see a carriage. And in that carriage, there are only three beings. The first one is, of course, the poet or the speaker. And the second person is the death himself or the death itself. And there is one more passenger, that is the immortality. So in the first stanza, we find a very interesting combination. We have a person, death and immortality. So all these things are quite contradictory. A person, a living person, uh, is quite opposite to death right and immortality is beyond death and beyond this person's life so all these three things or these three beings in the carriage they all are contradictory to each other they are opposing figures to each other so now let us move on to the second stanza we slowly drove he knew no haste and i had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility so they are driving slowly he knew no haste meaning he is not in any kind of hurry he is driving very peacefully and very uh, safely he is driving uh, the poet and the immortality and i i had put away my labor and my leisure too so because the poem is now uh, progressing towards the death so because of that all the busy life of the po poet all the all the problems all the occupying figures of the poet the the poet has put them all away i had put away my labor and my leisure too so labor here represents the problems of the poet's life so the poet has put away all the labor all the prob problems of her life and the leisure too all the happiness all the uh, good things all the pleasures of the life they are also now being put away because uh, when we approach the death uh, neither the labor nor the nor the leisure or nor the pleasure matters to us because death is the full stop to all those problems right for his civility and because this person because this death is so noble so very well behaved well mannered and it is so uh, civil that uh, the poet has made herself very comfortable with his company okay let us move on to the third stanza now we pass the school where children stroll at a recess in the rink we pass the fields of gazing grain we pass the setting sun so this is a very beautiful stanza wherein we see different kind of images so the first image we have is of school and children so what does school and children represent so children uh, represents our childhood or the beginning of life and uh, the second image we have is of the gazing rain so, uh, gazing grain i'm sorry gazing grain so grain here represents uh, the reproduction or uh, the what is that the cultivation of life because it is food right and the food gives life to other beings so uh, the fields of gazing grain represents the life here and uh, lastly we have the setting sun so setting sun is a very classic example of example of what so whenever we see uh, a sun setting even in movies so it represents the end of something the destruction or the uh, a full stop for something so the setting sun here represents the poet's death so we see a cycle here right from the beginning which is from the school then the uh, what is that gazing grain which is the middle years or, or the reproductive years and after that we see the setting sun which is the last part of of our life cycle which is the ending part of our life cycle 
so the next stanza here is uh, rather a continuation of the previous stanza so in the the last stanza ended with the line we passed the setting sun and this stanza begins with uh, a continuation of that line or rather he passed us the dews drew cribbling and chill for only gossamer my gown my tippet only tool so the first uh, line of this sandha is quite philosophical so in the last sandha we were talking about how there is a cycle for life right and the last line of the uh, previous sandha ended with we passed this of uh, past the sun so we are passing uh, this life cycle right but the first sand but the first line of this sandha says or rather he passed us so we are thinking that okay we are leaving this world but uh, the poet gives an alternative perspective that the world might be leaving us so there are two perspectives here so what happens in death we think that okay we are leaving this world or uh, the poet, but the poet says that it is possible that the world is leaving us okay so both the things are possible here so as they are approaching uh, towards the higher levels now so the dews drew uh, quivering and chill so it is very cold uh, in the upper atmosphere and the poet also poet or the speaker is feeling the chill now for only gossamer my gown my tippet only tool so uh, she is now describing what she is wearing she is only wearing a gossamer which is a gown and a tippet on a tool so she is only wearing these uh, clothes and uh, she is feeling very cold now because of the very cold atmosphere of the upper so let us uh, now move on to the second last stanza we paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground the roof was scarcely visible the cornice in the ground so now they are pausing uh, before a house a house which seems like a swelling in the ground so it, the house is looking like a swelling in the ground so the swelling in the ground it also represents the tombs or uh, what is that graveyard right so in graveyard we have so many tombs and in the tombs we know what lies there there lies only dead bodies or only dead people uh, live in the uh, tombs right so it is uh, again a kind of gothic explanation for the house uh, a swelling of, of the ground the roof was scarcely visible the cornice in the ground so the, even the upper part of the house even the roof and the cornice even they are scarcely visible even they are not properly visible meaning the entire house now is in the ground okay it, the house is submerged in the ground now and only the upper part of the house is uh, scarcely visible and now moving towards the last stanza since then it is centuries and yet feels shorter than a day i feel surmise the horse's head where towards eternity so now uh, it has been so many years after that particular day she doesn't even know how much time it has uh, how much time has passed because uh, this concept of time and concept of passing of time it is there only for the living beings right we follow the concept of time but what about the people who are who are dead do they have any concept of time not really so she doesn't know when she died and after her death how many centuries or how many years have passed he she doesn't have a practical idea about that and it feels like it feels shorter than a day and even though uh, centuries have been passed after her death but all this period it feels like uh, less than a day even shorter than a day because the concept of time is different uh, after the person dies and lastly uh, she says i first surmised the horses heads were towards eternity so when she was traveling uh, in the chariot and uh, the chariot was of course uh, was being drawn by the horses and she says that she remembers that the horses heads were uh, pointed towards the eternity what does that mean okay so now let us see that so the horses were walking or traveling towards the eternity so eternity here represents that there is no end to this journey right so uh, usually we think that okay death is the ending point or death is the end to everything but even after death 
this uh, person this speaker is traveling in the chariot towards the eternity so after our death there is uh, an extended life we can say a very different kind of life which is again which, which is eternal and there is no fear of death there, there there is no fear of stopping our life because we are traveling towards the eternity and by eternity we mean there is no end so this is all we have for this particular video and uh, i think emily dickinson have beautifully explored the concept of death and uh, the eternity and i hope you have at least gone got some idea about this poem by watching our video thank you so much for watching